please welcome Dr. Mike Dorkin. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, and you're all very uh, law-abiding and sat down and you're quiet, so that's very, very good. Um, welcome back uh, to everyone who was here yesterday, uh, and it's a new welcome for those who are joining us today. Um, yesterday was quite a day, really. It was uh, full on. Uh, we've moved the style uh, to shorter, crisper presentations uh, and more of them. Um, and I think uh, those of you here yesterday had some fantastic presentations, some, some great speakers. Um, uh, so it was invigorating, but it was also challenging uh, yesterday. Um, are we leading properly uh, and appropriately uh, from uh, the board level, but also at every level, uh, uh, in the operating room, on the ward, uh, in uh, the outpatient setting, in the community setting? Are we leading properly uh, with the right elements and ethics uh, at the fore of our conversations? Are we measuring the right things, uh, the right elements? Uh, uh, we talked a lot yesterday about the use of admin data versus the use of outcome data. Um, have we really got a handle on that and are we doing it appropriately? The answer yesterday was probably not. Um, and so are we using the data appropriately in our decision making? And, our, and as we heard from, uh, from Peter and Mark, uh, the future is uh, sensing systems with challenging numbers, you know, four to 500 hertz of uh, data coming through. Uh, so are we really in a, in a position uh, to, to look at that data appropriately? Um, and more importantly, are we working together collaboratively uh, in a community setting, uh, in every setting and at every level. Government has a role, uh, but so does everyone. Uh, everyone has a role at every level. Uh, and are we really tapping into that enthusiasm and that expertise uh, outside of the leadership of whatever systems we're in? Today, uh, we're moving. Uh, we're moving to solution and implementation mode. Uh, same challenges, but possible solutions uh, in the field of resilience, uh, system resilience as well as individual resilience and vitally patient and family engagement. Uh, I have a personal view that uh, when we use the word empowerment, which is a word that we use a lot, um, that sits for me in a, in a slightly hierarchical set of uh, relationships. You know, are we empowering our patients? That means are we are we giving them permission? Uh, are, we, are, are we giving them permission? So one of my journeys is to m remove the M, the E-M out of empowerment uh, and actually give power to the patients. Uh, so what we want patients to have is power, not us to allow them to, to have power. We have another set of outstanding speakers today. Uh, uh, this afternoon, we also move to uh, the global stage and take a look at uh, some of the global challenges uh, with yet another outstanding panel uh, who will join us uh, later. Uh, and then the future. Uh, the future with some of our, our fellows, our remarkable fellows, uh, whose journey has begun uh, with us and has been orchestrated by Peter Lackman um, and his own development of the patient safety movement faculty to support him and them on their journey. So that'll be a very interesting session for us. So I hope you enjoy the day. Uh, and please, please uh, create some partnerships uh, and some collaborations uh, with your fellows here today uh, and maintain those conversations and maintain those collaborations because that's our future. Uh, our future is working together, not in isolation and solo. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the day uh, and enjoy and keep challenging. Thank you very much. Thank you.